Okay, I will agree with that. Thank you. And hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here to listen to me talk about mindfulness-based stress reduction. It's such a timely topic, and I'm so um, I'm so pleased to be talking with you about it. Um, now, I'm going to define for you what mindfulness-based stress reduction is, and it starts with mindfulness. And mindfulness is something that I think everybody can benefit from. Mindfulness. The definition that I learned in my training is that is that mindfulness is paying attention on purpose to what's going on inside of ourselves and what's going on around us without judgment or criticism of ourselves or anyone else or anything else. That's what mindfulness is. is, is it's, an, it's an overall generalized awareness of what's happening in life. Um, the program that I am trained to teach is called, the formal name of it is called the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program. It's been around for over 20 years. It was originated by a man called Dr. John Kabat-Zinn. And he, he's got a formal pr uh, program, an eight week program called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which you may have heard of before. And that is program, it's a standardized program so that wherever you go to find out about it, you'll get the same, you get the same uh, learnings. And what it entails is a systematic way of being with your own life and your own experiences. The foundational work that we do in the Mindfulness State Based Stress Reduction Program comes from practice of meditation. And it's meditation in a very secular way. It's totally non-denominational, not related to any religion or culture. It's very American. And, um, and that makes it more accessible and, um, and less daunting for people who, who are cautious about um, about getting involved in other religions. So it's totally, se it's totally secular. Um, and that being said, I want to just briefly go over with you the benefits of this, this kind of a program for managing stress. Now, I think we all, I think I'm pretty safe in assuming that we all have some stress in our lives. Am I right about that? <laughs> I can only see one person's face, but I think I'm pretty safe in assuming that, that we all have some stressors in our lives. And it's, it's just part of life. And, it's a, and this is not going to get rid of all of our stressors. But when we practice mindfulness, it can help us to deal in a different way with whatever stressors we have in our lives, whether they're psychological stressors, in other words, if we are working too hard or if we have family issues or um, there's lots of psychological things that can be going on. But then we have the other physical stressors, the, the things that, that um, happen to in every family and to some degree or, or other, you know, different levels, um, we all have, to deal with aches and pains and illnesses, whether it's uh, acute or chronic illnesses, we all have things that are going on in our lives. And when we practice mindfulness, what happens is it doesn't necessarily make our stressor. You need some help? Whether, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I guess that must be... Uh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, some somebody That's in the fine. office is talking. Louisa, is your is your microphone on? Okay, I don't, I don't wish. Excuse me. Um, okay, so what I what I wanted to say about mindfulness based stress reduction is because of the tools that we're talking about um, in the, in these classes we learn how to be in a different relationship with the stressors in our lives. So- um, <clears throat> Let me know if you need more help. Yeah. So it starts with, it starts with the meditation process. <clears throat> so, um, so there's so many physical uh, 
problems that people have, especially chronic pain. This program was developed for people who had, who had to live with chronic pain. And it's really interesting how people who practice meditation and body scans as a regular thing, they, they end up discovering that their pain isn't always the same. And that's something that's, that's, it's really kind of interesting that, that when you, when you actually sit with what's going on in your life, you become, you, you, you develop a different relationship with it. And so that's something that's, um, that is really beneficial uh, to a lot of people. I should just briefly review with you before I go any further, who I am and why I'm doing this. <clears throat> I have had a full career as a registered dietitian. I worked for many years in hospital settings as a registered dietitian. I've got a master's degree in clinical nutrition. I've been a, a certified diabetes educator and I've taught in, um, in many settings in, in the um, in secondary school, uh, in, uh, assistant professor in, um, in the, in the college that uh, UMDNJ, um, the, where I graduated, and I've um, also taught in um, in cardiac rehab and diabetes self management programs. So I've had a lot of public speaking experience and in a lot of different medical areas. And I worked in intensive care units, and I also spent some time working in a drug and alcohol re rehab. Just so you know that. That's what my professional experience has been. And personally, I've been doing yoga since the 1970s. I love to do yoga. And, um, and my meditation practice evolved from my yoga practice. And, and so that's something that, um, that I was thrilled when I discovered the, that I had the opportunity to take the mindfulness-based stress reduction course for my own benefit. <clears throat> and then I was offered the opportunity to take the teacher training to teach mindfulness-based stress reduction. And concurrently with that, I also was able to take a course in mindfulness, uh, mindful eating, mindfulness-based eating awareness training, and also um, mindful eating conscious living, which has been a, an important part of my work currently. So, so these are all the things that I feel passionate about and that I'd like to share with you as much as I as much as I can in this brief setting. And we can't go into into great depth with anything um, when we only have an hour, but um, but we we will touch on it. So um, so anyway, uh, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about meditation right now. Um, there are many, many different schools of meditation. And I'll just tell you that the meditation that we practice as part of the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program is basically a, an, a mindful awareness, a breath awareness, a body awareness type of meditation. And so, um, so we're gonna do a little bit of that right now, okay? So I'm gonna... Um, up my notes here because I want to read this meditation. Okay, so if you could just get yourselves into a comfortable position, whatever position works best for you. If you would rather meditate sitting or if you'd rather meditate laying down, just be conscious of, of making a choice as to what position you want to be in, okay? And um, make yourselves comfortable. Um, if you're sitting up, having your feet flat on the floor is kind of helps to ground you and that, that uh, is something that's beneficial. Um, if you'd rather lay down, that's okay. Have, um, have your hands resting comfortably, whatever, in whatever position works well for you. And Let's get started with a little meditation. I like this meditation for transition. I use it frequently myself, you know, during the course of my day. It's a brief meditation, but it gets me centered. And so, so I call this the, the meditation for transition. And the, the introduction to it says, our lives are so busy and we all go from one thing to the next before we know it. 
and transitions are really important. So let's just sit together for a few quiet minutes to fully arrive here, to being fully present right here, right now. Taking a deep breath at your own pace, noticing the breathing, noticing the air coming into your nostrils, where it goes after it enters your nostrils, giving your undivided attention to your breathing. Noticing the breath as it comes in, as it goes down through your body. And if you can imagine it doing this, imagine the breath going down your legs to the bottoms of your feet. Breathing in and breathing out. And as well as you can, Notice any physical sensations on the bottoms of your feet. You might be aware of some kind of sensation in your toes. Your feet might feel cool or damp. You might feel your sock or some other sensation. Just noticing what's here for you right now. And now releasing your attention from your feet and moving that attention to sensations at other places where your body makes contact with whatever you're on. What do you feel? At your calves, the undersides of the thighs, the buttocks, the back, the hands. You might notice a sensation of pressure or warmth or softness or tightness at these points of contact. No right answers. Just noticing what's here for you for right now. And now bringing your attention to the breath in your body wherever it's more noticeable for you in this moment. That could be where you can feel your abdomen expanding as you breathe in and contracting as you breathe out. Or you might notice it most at your rib cage as the rib cage expands when you breathe in and contract slightly when you breathe out. Or you might notice it in your nose where you can feel the breath as it is drawn into the nostrils on the in-breath and leaves on the out-breath. You might notice tickling. The breath might feel cool or warm, dry or damp, it doesn't really matter. Just noticing what's here for you right now. Bringing your entire attention to each in-breath and to each out-breath. Now I'll just mention that you will notice that the mind quickly wanders off to thinking. It's just what minds do. When you notice that your attention has moved away from your breath, without judging or criticizing yourself, just bring the attention back, back to the sensations of your breath coming and going in your body. That's all there is to it. Paying attention to the breath as it comes and goes in your body. 
And now I'm going to ring a very light bell to bring you back from this period of mindful transition. So breathing a little bit more deeply in. And as you exhale, opening your eyes if they've been closed. Move around a little bit if you feel like you want to. And if you would like to say something about what you've noticed in that little experience, you're not required to, but if you have anything you'd like to share, just um, raise your hand so I can see you. So I can see you and unmute yourself. Anybody want to speak? Um, Go ahead, Emily. I, I had a really hard, something? Go ahead. a hard time focusing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making the transition from work to coming home to, to listening to you and leaving stuff at work at work and not just letting all that go and, and not continuously thinking about, you know, the last hour or so. So, uh, you know, I guess it must take a lot of practice to get to the point where you can just focus on your breathing because that's very difficult for me. Yes, and that's, it's, it's true for many people and that's why keeping it simple works. That brief meditation we just did, I, I honestly didn't check the time, but it was less than five minutes. And just repeatedly bringing the attention back to the breath, bringing the attention back to the breath. And you can do this anytime. When I first learned it, I would do it in the morning for a couple of minutes, at the end of my work day for a couple of minutes, and sometimes on my breaks during the course of the day, Nobody needs to even know what you're doing. You know, you can just pay attention to your breathing and it makes a difference. And what they say in the, in the trainings that I've been to is that it's really more effective to do two minutes or three minutes every day than to say, well, I can't do it. I don't have an hour. I'm not going to do it. Well, you know what? Right. You don't need an hour. You, you'll get benefit, even if it's just two or three minutes done consistently. That's the beauty of this kind of practice. You don't need a book. You don't need a training or a class. Just do it. We breathe. We all breathe. Yeah. Right. Okay, so thank you for saying that. Thank you for sharing. We're all so busy. And that's part of the reason we need to do this. Okay, does anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Okay, um, you know, I apologize for not saying anything at the beginning of the, uh, of the class, but um, did anybody bring food with them to do an eating exercise? I have a salad right here, so. <laughs> okay, one person brought food. Does any, anybody else? I see I names, do too. but I don't. You do? Okay, so we, so we can do an eating exercise. This is something that's so, um, you know, it, it, it can be fun and it doesn't have to be tedious or really serious. Everybody eats, we all need to eat and get yourself prepared to just have a bite to eat. And if you don't happen to have food with you, you can do it in an imaginary way. Imagine yourself eating. Could be anything. I recently learned how to make these macarons. My grandson and I love them and they're expensive. And I learned how to make them with almond flour uh, and they are yummy. If you savor what you're eating, you can eat anything. But what I love, one of the things I love about children, there's a lot of children in my life, 
they just are such mindful eaters. Look at the intensity of this child's face. Don't you love it? <laughs> we could all eat like that. There would be no people uh, binging or becoming out of balance with food. Just imagine yourself being a little child. Okay, so if you're ready, let's do a mindful eating exercise. Mindful eating is paying attention on purpose to whatever it is you're eating. I no longer am the kind of dietitian who has do or don't list. There's no guilt associated with eating mindfully at all. Any food can be eaten mindfully. And if you eat it mindfully, you're less likely to wolf it down and not taste it. You'll taste it more completely. And, and it will also satisfy your appetite in a different way when you're paying attention to what you're eating. So let's start this practice by sitting quietly in a meditative way. So I can try and get calm and not no, Noticing, noticing your body, noticing your sensations in the area of the stomach, noticing how hungry you are right now. Do you feel on a scale of one to 10, one being barely hungry at all, like I don't really care about eating or, or not eating, or are you ravenous? Just checking, do a check-in with yourself. And now, now that you've done that, have a look. If you have food with you, have a look at the food that you have with you. Looking at your food, you know, bring it up where you can see it well. Look at it and ask yourself, as you look at this article of food, What's happened? Has anything changed as far as your level of hunger goes? Are you feeling your stomach grumbling, your mouth watering? Are you, what are you feeling? Assess your hunger and also ask yourself, is this a food that I really want to eat right now? Or am, I eat, am I eating it for a reason of convenience or because I think it's good for me? Just ask yourself, why am I choosing this food? And now, once we've done that, take a small amount of the food, whether it's something you eat with a fork or a spoon or with your fingers, just take a small amount, a small enough amount to just put on your tongue. You may have to cut it or break it or something to, in order to put it onto your tongue, put it in your mouth and don't chew it. Just let it sit in your mouth with your mouth closed and notice what happens when you put that food into your mouth. Asking yourself, hmm, do I like the way this tastes? Do I like the texture of this? Am I salivating more now that I have this in my mouth? Do I have an impulse to bite, to really taste it or not? Just noticing. And now you can, you can chew, chew it up. And notice as you chew it slowly and attentively, noticing what it feels like, how it tastes, how the taste changes as you chew, as you fully macerate, mash it up into a puree, as you fully macerate it in your mouth, the saliva production, noticing the impulse to swallow, noticing how your level of hunger is changing as you're eating. Just noticing, chew it a little bit more thoroughly, swallow it down if you're ready for that. Just being attentive. That's what mindfulness is, is attentiveness to what you're eating, whether you like it or not, how hungry you are, and what else there is to pay attention to. How's your throat? You'd like to take another mouthful of whatever food you have. Go ahead and take it. 
and try doing the same thing, just chewing it. One of the things about eating mindfully is being mindful of how much you put in your mouth at one time so that you're not forcing yourself to chew more than you really can. And that, that helps, that makes a difference. So again, as you chew and notice how you're chewing, notice the taste, the texture, and how you're feeling. And how has your sense of hunger changed? So just do it, just do it. One of the things that's wonderful about this practice is you can't really binge when you're doing this. I don't know if binging is one of your issues, but it's an issue for a lot of people. You can't really binge when you're eating mindfully because when you're eating mindfully, you're, you're making yourself slow down. That's an important thing. The other thing that, that uh, was so useful when I was working in hospitals is I worked with a lot of people with uh, digestive issues and with people who have GERD or reflux. And when I would go in to speak to people, my first question is always, how quickly do you eat? And, and people would have get these sheepish looks and they'd say, I know I eat too fast. <laughs> and if you have an issue with reflux or with GERD, if you slow down, chew mindfully and attentively, it really makes a difference in how you digest. It really does. So other than that, is everyone done eating for now? Does anyone have anything they would like to say about this eating exercise? Well, I find it very, very helpful. <laughs> and <laughs> the first time you did an eating exercise with our library, it really stuck in my head and I have been really doing it. So it does, it stuck with me. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm really glad to hear it. Can you give us some examples of how it's changed um, how you, your eating behavior? Well, you know, I've been trying to also change the snacking and I like a lot of savory snacks instead mm -hmm. of sweets, which mm -hmm. are not necessarily better for you. <laughs> it's just my mm -hmm. go-to. And instead mm -hmm. of, you know, pouring cups of sunflower seeds into my hand, I take, you know, two teaspoons max. Mm -hmm. And each one I chew very slowly. And I realize after the two teaspoons, I kind of hit the mark. I didn't need to eat that cup that I was going for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's so true because it satisfies your appetite in an unexpected way, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. When I first did this exercise in, in part of my training, we did it with raisins. We call it the raisin exercise because that's what we're traditionally taught to do it with. We would do it with a single raisin. And yeah. of course, um, we as Americans never eat one raisin at a time. But I was, in, I was in class with somebody from Mexico and she said, what's the big deal? This is the way we eat raisins all the time. They would only eat one raisin at a time. And I said, well, gee, now that's really interesting. I never, uh, never even knew anybody who just ate one raisin at a, at a time. No, that is but, not the American way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but it's, but it's interesting. It's just interesting to, to talk to people from other cultures and, and find yes. out what the traditions are. Yeah, the, yeah. The thing with to eat mindfully, though, you can't do anything else. Like I, I hardly ever eat a meal without a book in front of me or the computer in front of me or driving or at least having a conversation. And you can't 
do that. You actually have to concentrate on what you're tasting and, and chewing. And I don't think I've ever just done that and just for, done nothing but eat. That's just a strange thing to me. <laughs> I have I have a little book that I got from one of my retreats only about this big and each page has got a picture of a little stick figure doing some kind of activity and I love the one that says when eating just eat and we don't do that when drinking just drink and you'd be surprised how big a difference it makes. Of course, I'm not suggesting to you that you totally stop. I mean, I don't totally do it myself. You know, the, you totally stop doing other things while you're eating. I mean, that's what we, that's what we do. But to, to take even one meal or one snack a day and eat it mindfully can make a difference. I'll tell a story on myself. I was teaching this class to a, to a group of nurses at the hospital where I used to work. And, um, and, and we did the same exercise. We did it with, we did it with chocolate chips. Um, I mean, chocolate kisses. And um, and, uh, and one of the nurses says to me, Linda, I couldn't do this on my on my break at work. I get fired because it would take me way too long to <laughs> to eat. Um, yes. So um, so anyway, uh, that's it's it's something that is a good it's a good thing to know how to do and to do it when you can. You may not be able to do it when you're with other people because of the logistics of that, but um, but it's something it's something to be mindful of. It's just one more thing to be mindful of. Okay, I see something in the chat about the centering prayer group. I don't know anything about the centering prayer group. Maybe, um, maybe Louisa can answer that question. That's um, I don't know what she's referring to either. Emily, can you tell us what you're referring to? Uh, I I don't know. I just some someone in the the group now okay. just put up. That, I don't know who um, it is. Emily, that was, I'm um, Dawn. Hi, that was oh, me. Hi. I think you were on the last meeting and you seemed yes. really interested. So I belong to a centering prayer group. So I sent you the info. So that Thank was me. You. Okay. It's just, it's just a, another way to meditate. That's all. So. Oh yeah. I, I think you were on that last meeting and I was trying yeah. to type it to you, but we closed out the meeting before I could finish typing and my skills were not that great. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So, so it's in, um, yes. it's in the, it's in the chat now. Well, I sent it to em Emily, I thought privately, but, um, yes, yeah, I, I, anyway, it's, everybody's welcome to join. It's a one, once a week, Thursdays, you can show up, you can miss it. It's, you know, no requirements necessary. It's, um, usually brother Philip will read a quote and then we mute ourselves for about 20 minutes he'll come back on and read the quote again and we say our goodbyes and it's wonderful anyway i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt that meeting but i was trying to respond to emily privately so anyway <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay it's okay i i i know uh you know i know some people who do centering prayer and from what i've heard it's it's very similar to what we're doing here when i when i lead a meditation group you know so, um some some people tell me that it's very similar to what they do in the centering prayer group, um, you know, and, and, um, but I can't, I can't really speak to it other than that. Um, so anyway, um, anything else we want to say about mindful eating? You think it can help people lose weight if they, um, you know, I, I, I'm about 30 pounds overweight and I'm hoping that if I pay more attention to uh, how I eat, maybe I will eat less. Um, well, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's an, that's a really important topic and I'd love to do more sessions on that here. Uh, we'll have to see what the interest is, but um, 
in our culture, there is so much emphasis on dieting and on restriction, which really just makes things worse. Um, if we eat in a mindful way, we're more likely to eat what the amount that our bodies need. Um, I, one of my instructors that, uh, for the uh, mindfulness-based eating awareness um, training said to the class, he said, how would you feel if at the end of this week-long full-time class that we were taking, if you didn't lose a pound, but if you had a more normal, natural, joyful relationship with food. How would you feel about this way of eating? And, you know, it, it, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it's not because, because we're so used to the yo-yo, you know, the restrict, and then I can't stand it anymore. There's a special occasion and, I, and then I binge it. I go off the di this diet and then I go on to another diet, you know, and that's going to save my life, but then I can't stand that indefinitely if we can be mindful about how we eat and also to be mindful of what our natural body shape should be sometimes in this country people are obsessed with being quote thin and thinness is not always a, a good goal I mean, I have, uh, you know, there's people in my family who have had eating disorders and it's it's not having an obsession with thinness is not necessarily a healthy thing. So, so maybe looking a little different, differently at what your weight goals are is something just to, just to give some thought to, you know, how much did you weigh when you were in your, your preteen years and how little are you comfortable eating and how much are you comfortable exercising and what does it take to get to that weight goal is it really a health goal or is it something else so so i think that that mindful eating can definitely be of benefit to anybody regardless of what their weight is and and it's important to um to to start rethinking you know, that our, that our society is in the process of rethinking the whole diet mentality. Okay, so does that answer your question in a roundabout long way? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm diabetic and my, my weight is contributing to my diabetes problems. And, you know, it's, it's all a big mess of, you know, not eating mindfully and that sort of thing that I need to work on. But Right, right. Actually, I, I'm in the process of doing a, um, a symposium uh, that's called Weight Neutral for Diabetes, because there's so much emphasis on weight loss for diabetes, and that may, it may not be as effective as they originally had thought. So if people with diabetes can learn a different way of eating that's mind, more mindful, lower in simple carbohydrates, you know, more um, plant-based that may do more to help to manage the diabetes than, than weight loss alone would. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot, there's a lot to be said for that. So, um, so I'd, I'd be glad to talk with you offline on that. If you, if you think you might, you might like to, to, to do, you know, do some work with that. Um, yeah, but it's, 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 diabetes is serious and, you know, whatever way we can get people to, uh, to work better with their, you know, with their bodies and what they can do to take care of themselves is a definitely beneficial. Okay. So I'm glad you brought that up. So, um, I will, uh, I will give you my contact information at the end if you, if you don't, uh, if you don't have it already. Um, okay. So, uh, so let's see. Oh, my. Uh... Also, anybody can always contact the library and reach out to us and we'd be happy to send Linda's contact if you don't get a chance to grab it today. Yeah. So remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So and 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 uh, and Louisa knows that I'm I'm available to do other programs if um, you know, if there's an interest. Um, sometimes I do uh, a program called mindfulness eating and moving. I love I love the snow. I, I'm you know a Jersey girl born in cold weather and uh, love to get outside and play. Mindfulness move and moving 
is another important thing. We all need to move, but we are not all going to be elite athletes or totally buff like some of the movie stars are. That's totally not the goal. Um, we need to know that moving is important, but what does moving mean? This is my grandson. We, we kayak together. Um, that was taken a couple of years ago. Um, getting outside and moving in whatever way your body can do it. This, I like this picture. She's walking. In our classes, we do walking meditation. Yoga is something I told you that I've done for many years myself. The name yoga um, comes from yoking of the body and the mind and the spirit, pulling it all together. It's mindfulness in motion, okay? And so I'm going to do a little exercise with you on mindful movement, but there's lots of different ways of doing mindful movement. And, and you can do it sitting, you can do it laying down, you can do it standing up, you can stand on your head, which I can't do. But um, let's do a little bit of mindful movement now before we end, just to put you in touch with your own body. And let me just say that I did mention earlier that I've been doing yoga for many years. And so my body may not be the same as yours. If I tell you to do something and it hurts, or if it's something you've done before and you know it hurt you on a, another time, don't do it. You don't have to do what I do. Just move, just move. Do what works for you, okay? So if, you know, I don't know what kind of space you're in right now, so I'm not gonna try to do walking meditation with you right now. But if we were able to meet in person, we would do walking meditation. And all it means is, noticing how you're moving as you walk, okay? I'm, I have my feet under my table right now and I'm moving my feet back and forth, um, you know, just because that's what I do. But let's, but let's uh, get ourselves, you know, if you're, if you're seated now, just be conscious of your position on whatever it is you're sitting on and notice where are your feet? Where are your legs? What do you feel like moving right now? My impulse right now is to stretch my arms above my head. I like to do this. Do you like to do this? Just stretch, just do a gentle stretch and noticing, noticing as you stretch your fingers up to the ceiling, noticing, where do you feel it? Where do you feel it? I feel it in my hands, my wrists, my forearms, my elbows, my upper arms and my shoulders, and even in my back. It feels good to do this to me. And then, I, then we could kind of stretch towards one side, gently, gently, gently. I'm back to the center, stretch towards the other side, gently, gently, gently. How does it feel to stretch like that? Do you like it or do you not like it? If you don't like it, that's an indication it may not be doing you any good. So this is a very simple yoga stretch. Easy and many people can do it, but if you can't, no worries. There's other things you can do. Okay. And then there's another one we can do. Stretch your hands out in front of you, in front of yourself, and bring your, bring your fists to your shoulders. And then stretch your elbows out to the sides, and then bring the elbows together in front. Out to the side, and back as far as you can without stra straining and together in front. And once more, out to the side and together in front. And now let's just put our arms down. And when we do yoga the right way, there's a pause in between 
the exercises. You pause, you take a breath or two breaths. Notice how you're feeling before going on to doing something else. Almost time for us to wrap up, but I'd like to do a little stretching before we go. So um, I, am, I am sitting on a chair and my feet are flat on, flat on the ground. I'm gonna take my left hand and put it on the outside of my right knee. And I'm gonna take my right hand and put it on the seat of the chair behind my butt. And so I'm pushing with my left, I'm pushing with my left hand, which is against my right knee. And I'm gonna push a, very gently and turn my head, my shoulders and my upper back to my right and feel gentle stretch in my back, in my neck, my upper and middle back, and just twist a little bit. I like twists, but some people with back problems don't. So I'm just telling you, be careful. And let's come back around to center. And now let's do the other side. Left hand to the, to the back of the seat of the chair. Right hand on the left outside of the left knee. And then just very gently twist the head, the shoulders, the upper back. Just twist. Hold that for a few moments. Noticing how that feels. Breathing naturally and normally. Hold it for a few more moments. And then come back around to center. There's so many more things we could do. Um, but let's just come back to the group. Does anyone have anything to say about the few simple stretches we just did? I wish I had more time to spend with you and we could do more. Um, so if nobody has anything else they, they'd like to say, go ahead, Louisa, did you wanna say something? No. Nope, I was just taking my mic off. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So let's let's just do one more really brief closing meditation. For me, this is a meditation is a, is a way of beginning and a way of ending. So get yourself in a comfortable position, whatever works for you. And breathe. Hands resting comfortably wherever works for you. And notice your breathing. Notice how your body is right now. Notice how you're breathing. Anything going on with the thoughts or the emotions? Just accept them, whatever they are. You can do this anytime, anywhere. Just sit, hands flat on the lap, and breathe. It's a wonderful practice for calming the nervous system. If you're in an intense situation, if something dramatic is going on around you, people don't have to know what you're doing, but you can quiet yourself. If you feel a knot in the pit of your stomach because of something that's happening, just sit with it and breathe with it and be with it. Okay, that's all.
anybody have any any comments, anything they'd like to say? Any questions? I'm going to remove the screen.